Greetings! I know I don't normally do haul or pick up videos, but this is absolutely exceptional and I had to do it. These unassuming boxes here are rather unassuming, but it's the content that counts. And I got this all from a guy on Craigslist. John, he's completely awesome. Really cool, really nice guy. And I uh, drove almost two hours or so each way to pick up this stuff. Now, of course, we have these three mysterious boxes here, but I will be getting to the contents of them soon. Here is why I went down there in the first place. These two metallic-y, plastic-y boxes. First up here, we have this one. And in case you don't recognize it, allow me to demonstrate the goodness. This is a K-Pro 4 80 three model as far as I can tell from the full height floppy drives here. This is one of the earlier portable computers, uh, runs CPM and is completely awesome. I've been wanting one of these for a long time just because it is so completely rad looking and I have no idea how to use it. <laughs> I've never used one of these before and I can't wait to find out. I don't know if it works. I know that it does at least come with the keyboard cable and it plugs in and turns on and such and asks for the boot up diskette but this uh, I guess this is the A drive I can't get it to boot anything I don't know that it's actually connecting with the disk because this is a little bit loose B drive seems fine it's got the proper spring loading and it feels like the head is at least making contact with the disk so probably gonna have to work on that a little bit <clears throat> this is the back of the beast completely awesome it's where the keyboard plugs in and here we have the next machine this came before the K-Pro it is the Osborne 1 it's actually an Osborne 1A at least again I assume judging by the floppy drives 5 inch black and white monochrome screen the K-Pro 4 actually has a green screen uh, it's got the cables it also boots up but I also can't get it to boot anything at least not yet, I don't know. At least the screen's nice and sharp. Uh, the different slots and everything seem to be here. Not much to see on the back of these things. You do have the power cord uh, with the on and off switch. Goes right in there. Um, handle, typical sewing machine look. It's pretty dirty. Spacebar has a little bit of a <laughs> an issue there. Looks like it's rusted through, but you know what, that's fine. I'll fix it up and get it cleaned and working gracefully here soon. And if you wonder why I am so confident that I will get it working, well, let's get to the boxes. Arabesque UL, maybe. I'm not really sure what it says, but it doesn't matter. Because inside is goodness. Oh my goodness, it's goodness. Um, we have here several diskettes for the K-Pro. Many of them seem to be original, at least all these. Uh, different versions of CPM. This is Microsoft Basic 80, Profit Plan, the Word Plus, and a whole bunch of other things. WordStar, um, some games here, Aliens, and other things. <laughs> More WordStar, some DBase, and MS-DOS version 2.11 for the K-Pro 2 and 4. This one confuses me because I didn't think there was MS-DOS on CPM type machines that ran that kind of processor, but you know what? I've got a lot to learn here. All the rest in here is pretty interesting stuff. Because, okay, well, this is more K-Pro stuff. Uh, lots and lots of K-Pro stuff. I remember these things, but I don't remember what they're called. I know they had something to do with laser-based optical media, but... This is pretty cool. It's a whole CD-ROM full of CPM software and text. Here's where it starts to get interesting. This is a computer cover for a Heath Zenith machine. Now from what I was talking to from John, he said the guy that this stuff came from was a complete old schooler computer guy that worked on precursor to the internet for Heathkit and other things like that. Um, ARPANET, I assume. You know, I'm really not sure. He didn't really know too much either for sure, except that you know he had some historical stuff. And this all came from him via his daughter and all of this has to do, from what I can tell, with Heathkit machines. 
uh, almost all of these in here. This looks like more K-Pro stuff here. This is WordStar, more WordStar, more WordStar, Fortran, C-Basic, and M-Basic. Almost all of these here are single-sided, single-density, 35-track floppies. Uh, some of them are 40-track. This is old-school stuff. I mean, this is, you know, before, well, double-sided, double-density. This one's honestly more of the same. This is mostly stuff from the Heath Users Group. Uh, lots of software. In fact, this one's never been opened. <laughs> it's some sort of update for SuperCalc. Uh, these are different games. Uh, see, here's Adventure and Miscellaneous. Miscellaneous. Hard disk support package. More games, one and two. No telling what those are. No telling what will run these. At least not at this point. I'm assuming most of this stuff is also Heathkit. Lots and lots of diskettes in here, uh, different versions of CPM. I really, really like these disk boxes, by the way. I mean, you know, that's quality stuff. Oh yeah, I especially like this here. This is a never been opened box of 10 sector single sided, single density floppy disks. <laughs> that's awesome. This will go well with my never open box of 8 inch floppies for the TRS-80. They're all tapes, looks like for the Heath Users Group stuff. They're not really labeled, they just have part numbers, so I really don't know what they're for. On the other hand, this one, this one intrigues the crap out of me. <laughs> That's Space War. In case you're not familiar, it's one of the very first games ever made back in the 60s. Again, I assume for a Heath kit system, I don't really know. This one says nothing. This one is looks like some debug and basic programs, perhaps. Good grief. There's a lot more than I thought. Extended basic. Oh, a lot of tapes in here. I guess I need to find out what these actually go to. Yeah, several games and some really random Heath Kit related things in that one. I really don't know what too much of it is. If and when I find out more, I will find out more. This one, on the other hand, is labeled K Pro. So this one really, really had my attention. And that attention had merit, apparently. This is the manual to K Pro WordStar, uh, K Pro Perfect Writer and Perfect Speller, K Pro Perfect Filer, Perfect Calc. The perfect manual for the Cape Road 2. They had uh, this obsession with perfection, apparently. I really love this thing. It's pretty much terribly made. <laughs> it's like photocopies and cheap spiral plastic. The WordStar handbook. Lots of handwritten margin notes and such in this one. Little pocket references for perfect calc and perfect writer pretty useful some uh, high quality annotations right here manual for k pro s basic that's freaking awesome some other really cool stuff here this seems to be the first issue of profiles magazine for the k pro with uh, the k pro computers in a desert i <laughs> That really confuses me. All sorts of useful information though. I mean, everything from troubleshooting to upgrading. I mean, of course, there's tons of that in those manuals too, which, you know, that's why I really think I'm going to have a pretty acceptable time troubleshooting those things, getting them to work. I, I love the cover of this. <laughs> Holy crap. You see how portable the K-Pro is? You can do it while roller skating like a weird 80s lady. This one's pretty cool. K-Pro's 2010 connection. <laughs> That's just funny because this is 2010 when this is being recorded. I'm assuming it has to do with the movie 2010. Yeah, yeah, 2010, the sequel to 2001 A Space Odyssey. These are freaking crazy. Micro Cornucopia, the single board systems journal. There is so much information in these things. I've just spent like 30 minutes just sitting down quickly looking through them. I haven't even begun to look at this stuff. I mean, this is 
all about crazy systems and languages and all sorts of stuff that half of it I've never even heard of. I mean, it's just, you know, one of those users groups, uh, journals with tons of code, tons of articles, and just crap tons of stuff about the K-Pro and other micros from the time. Several newsletters. This is the MC Kug newsletter from 1983. Report from our noble leader, Bob Larkman. These are uncommon, really uncommon things here. Um, pretty much just handmade photocopied journals with all sorts of handwritten things in here. This is pretty cool, the K-Pro Users Disk Catalog. It's all of these different programs and little things, utilities that you can buy for your K-Pro right out of this little catalog. Again, it looks so amateur, it's just stapled together. <laughs> I love it. Another issue of profiles with a completely pro businessman right here. This will be really freaking useful, the K-Pro 2 User's Guide. And I like that they put this on here, there's a little sticker. The operation of the K-Pro 4 is the same as the K-Pro 2. The only difference is that the capacity of the K-Pro 4 diskettes is double that of the diskettes for the K-Pro 2. Which in effect is pretty much it. I mean, K-Pro 2 and 4 were almost identical. So, that'll be useful. Uh, there's a little tiny guide to Microsoft Basic for the K-Pro. Uh, the K-Pro Word Plus Manual, uh, Microsoft Basic K-Pro, the manual for K-Pro CPM. I'm pretty psyched to have this one. I hardly have any CPM stuff at all, at least before today. And there's a lot of stuff in here from Digital Research themselves. Manual to K-Pro Profit Plan. That sounds impossibly boring. Looks like manual supplements for the SWP Co-Power 88, which I still have no idea what is. Just typed out photocopied stuff that's been rusted to this paperclip. The MS-DOS 2.0 User's Guide. Somebody's phone number. It looks like it's on newsprint or something. It's super old looking. It's just all commands and syntax and all sorts of loveliness for MS-DOS 2. And this right here is probably one of my favorite, if not my favorite thing in here. This is the original letter for buying the K-Pro. Congratulations, you are now the proud owner of a K-Pro 4 personal portable computer. Be sure to save all the packing materials in case you ever want to ship the computer. Unfortunately, they didn't save the packing materials, but that's pretty cool. Like, it shows the value, supposedly, of all the different software and everything that it comes with, which is an insane amount of money for how much you paid for the thing. It, you know, like the Osborne, it came with, like, $1,500 worth of software when the computer itself only came for about that cost. And this right here. This is the Digital Research Operating System End User License Agreement. Yes, it's the EULA for CPM. Signed by Gary Kildaw. Probably not his actual signature, but holy crap, that is cool. I am framing that. So there you go. Tons and tons of CPM, K-Pro, a little bit of Osborne, lots of Heathkit stuff, other random things. Just an absolute retro treasure cove. All from a simple Craigslist find just a couple hours away. Some people might think this is just stupid, like where am I going to put all this, but you know what, I think this is completely awesome. It might not be worth what I paid for it for some people, but to me it is very much worth it. I'm going to get a lot of enjoyment out of this. Oh yeah, and how much did I pay for it? 50 bucks.